Hi everyone. Um, okay, so I'm not the one taking the session, don't worry. Um, <laughs> so the, this session is um, an introductory session to GitHub Copilot. Um, so I just wanted to give like a background of, you know, why we are doing this session and, you know, just a little bit of backstory. So um, we got a grant from GitHub to tell stories about how people are using GitHub Copilot to um, develop open source projects. Um, so this, we are developing different stories, but this particular session is about um, introducing people to GitHub Copilot. So how many of you have heard of GitHub Copilot? Okay. How many of you have not heard of GitHub Copilot and are developers? Okay, great. Um, how many of you have used GitHub Copilot? Okay. So for the people that have, have not used it, um, and even people that have used it can also participate in the session as well. So um, we're going to be clearing, how many people are with their laptops too that want to participate? Great, good. Okay, so um, we're going to be clearing out that table at the end, two tables at the end, and people can also sit here and use, um, but we still need some people to be there because we want to capture highlights of um, you know, people taking part in the session. So some people, we're going to clear out the tables while she's doing the intro session, and then some people can go sit there with their laptops and use it um, so we get to capture um, the highlights as well. So yeah, if you can. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me like audibly? Okay, so um, I'm glad to be here and to have this session on co-pilot. Uh, okay, please, can there be a little decorum? Like, it's kind of noisy. So, um, yeah, like yeah, as I said, I'll be, I'll be having like an introductory session to what GitHub Copilot is. I'll be giving um, an overview of like pre-copilot time and would have hands-on session on copilot. So, um, I'm going to begin now. Okay, so, uh, uh, it's not going. <laughs> Okay, so um, meet me, I am an upcoming software engineer. I am a technical writer, I'm open source contributor. I do more of technical writing with open source. I contribute to the Julia ecosystem and the packages. And I am a community lover, that's why I'm here to give this session. So you could follow me or you could check me out on Twitter at Ifeon. So um, introduction. So before the advent of um, AI-powered um, systems and coding tools, developers used to rely on like Google, you search on the web, and you do things like that. So during that time, some of the practices and some of the things that developers used were code editors, you have um, JetBrains, you have Visual Studio Code, Sublime Text, and the likes, yeah. Then we also have like IDs to there. Yeah, so we have code editors and IDs. So we have code snippets, we have templates. You can find code snippets on GitHub. You can find code snippets on, which brings me to um, Stack Overflow, online communities like um, the Django Project, uh, different communities you can find on Slack and the likes. And you use the, um, the God of all, that's documentation. So each program, programming language, each um, package, each everything, they have documentation, right? So everyone would use that and do I, it was kind of slow, yeah, you can relate with me. You trying to find something, you have to read like 100 slides, um, 100 threads of Stack Overflow. It was really, really hard and um, there, were, there were tools, there were tools that started coming up because technology was moving, technology was advancing and then we had like several AI-powered coding tools that were trying to help with this problem. They were trying to help with productivity, with devs, and time management, right? So we have Tab9. Tab9 is like one of the most popular ones um, before Copilot. A lot of people used to use Tab9. Then we have Kite that was developed by Kite AI. Kite is no longer in existence. I think they shut down. Then we have Deep Code. We have Codata and we have IntelliCode. So these were actually existing before um, the existence of Copilot. And yeah, so now we already know 
that there were AI tools, right? But now, so what's copilot? If I hearing copilot, copilot, what what exactly is copilot? So um copilot is an AI powered code completion tool that helps you complete your code like the name. And it was developed in um, cooperation with OpenAI. So like Microsoft and OpenAI have like been coming way back for, for a time now. So they use an LLM. So an LLM is um, a large language model. And it was built on OpenAI Codex that is, um, that is actually, I think it's open source. So uh, is this the open? So it is designed to actually assist developers. So um, Copilot works in a way that when you start writing code, it's like understands or it thinks of what you think what you want to write. So for instance, let's say uh, you want to write a function that adds two numbers. So you know I'm a Python dev. So you know if you want to write it, you're first going to call um, the method name that's um, dev, and then you write add two numbers or something. So Copilot would think of it like, okay, this person wants to write a function because he has seen diff, and then it's going to be like, oh, okay, this person actually wants to add two numbers. And then it's going to come up with uh, an, a suggestion that will help you return those two numbers. So you will see it like a suggestion, and it's up to you to actually see if you want to accept it or not. So, and lastly, it's um, a tool where productivity meets efficiency. So let's say you are doing uh, monotonous things like you're writing tests and you want to finish up. So Copilot comes in and makes it to, to be more efficient in the sense that it's like knows you are doing this and then it starts giving you suggestions and now you can finish up what you are doing and be more productive. So it's like it's like a partner as you are writing is suggestion suggesting. So you don't have to actually leave your editor, right? So you just like it's there, it's holding your hand like virtually. That's basically what Copilot does. It holds your hand as you're writing and you can like write code. And obviously it's not perfect. So there are sometimes you can make wrong suggestions for you, right? And then it's up to you to now see if it's right or wrong for your use in your code. So Copilot, like I have said, it analyzes your code that you've written in that session. So if I'm writing a code in a particular session, Copilot would look at what I'm trying to do, and with that, it's going to bring up my suggestion. So that's it. So it could be different in different sessions, um, or the suggestion will be different in like different concepts or contexts of what you're writing your code. So that's basically how Copilot works. So um, the next thing is that um, in today's world of software development, like we're leveraging power powerful tools like GPT. When she, I went root asked how many people uses um, GPT, a lot of people raised their hand. So we can see that everyone is actually trying to meet up with um, productivity. No one wants to be lazy anymore, I believe. <laughs> so and everyone is trying to enhance their productivity so that. I mean, you try to meet deadlines, you try to you know, finish records on time so that your employer will know you're a serious person and will give you more, more work or probably a promotion. So, so uh, yeah, this thing is not working. So what are the key features of Copilot? Now that we understand, I believe I've been able to um, pass across what Copilot is. So what are like the key features of Copilot that we have? So um, the first feature is AI-powered code generation. So it does this by searching. It's actually trained. If you go to um, GitHub Copilot um, website, you see it's trained on billion on a billion lines of code. So with that with that in its knowledge, it knows what you are trying to do. I mean, it's going to be rare for you to be writing a code that someone has not written before. It's just that you can't find it. So now Copilot will help you to generate that code that you want to write. And we're going to see it in action here. So it, help it helps you to actually generate your code. Then auto-completion. You could be writing a code. Like I can start writing. Maybe I'm doing um, palindrome and I've started writing it. So Copilot is going to look at it and be like, OK, I think this person is actually writing um, a palindrome checker. Let me help the person complete it. And then line completion. So you could be writing in your VS code, maybe line by line, and then you help it to completed. So it works for like a lot of languages. It supports 
like the common languages, even Markdown. Um, as a technical writer, too, you could use Copilot, especially if you are writing your README. So, um, yeah, just like um, a bonus or just like for the demo, I actually used Copilot to generate everything you see on the repository that we're going to use. So it's context aware. Like I said, it is, con it is aware of the context that you're using it inside. So it's not going to generate or it really generates something that is out of context for you in that your particular code So or your particular session. So it's just to have in mind that it's actually going to help you in that particular session. And then it has like multiple language, su language supports, JavaScript, Python, C, C++, any language you can think of that is actually written by people. So copilot would, and you can even use it to like convert your code. So let's say you have a code in JavaScript and you want to convert it to Python. You just write in a comment or a prompt that you convert it to Python and it will do it for you. And I've done it severally. And it's also integrated into Visual Studio Code. Like we all know Visual Studio is owned by, um, Visual Studio Code is owned by Microsoft too. I mean it's their tool, yeah? So they'll have to integrate it into it. So, uh, uh, this thing is not working. <laughs> okay, so what are the benefits of Copilot after we've seen it? So, um, the benefits of Copilot, um, we have increased productivity. So, let's say I used to write code maybe four hours before, and I'm using Copilot. Because it's suggesting for me faster, I would actually be more productive and I hope not lazy. So it will make you more productive. You write your, like, your code faster and also reduce repetitive tasks. Like I said earlier, if you're writing tests, you're always writing, especially in Django, like you're always writing, it's, always, it's like almost the same thing. They almost do the same thing, but like for each use case. So whenever I'm doing it, I just, like, I just write and Copilot already knows what I'm doing. So I just accept everything and I mean, I've written like 300 lines of tests before with Copilot, and everything was working. All I just have to do is that. I just have to look at it that, oh, OK, I think this is right. I think I want to remove this. I think I want to remove that. So Copilot will help you to like re reduce those repetitive tasks so that you don't like keep on doing it. And then your work looks uh, monotonous. So learning aid, Copilot will help you to like learn. Um, I'll be using myself as a personal example because I use Copilot a lot. So there was a time I was writing. Um, a code, um, I was working on a project and I was trying to achieve something but I could not achieve it because I didn't even know the function that was existing in Python to do it. I mean, programming languages have like a lot of functions and all. So I was writing it and all of a sudden, Copilot suggested something for me and I accepted it. I was so desperate at that time. So what I just did was I accepted it, I ran it, the thing worked. I was like, wow. Then I now clicked on it and I saw, oh, this thing actually exists. And with that, I was able to learn like two to three to five more functions that do similar things in Python. And I was actually happy because if Copilot did not do that for me, I don't know, I would have been reading tens of like Stack Overflow questions because eventually I will find it. And the time I used to find it would be like one week. And I had to submit that thing like very fast. So code quality improvements. You improve your code with um, Copilot. If you ask it to probably refactor something for you, you want to change. You want to. You don't want to use maybe if statement somewhere. You want to use while loops. Copilot will help you do that. So you can improve your code for you. It's basically like I said. It's like your pair programmer when you're writing code. Then collaboration. So you're collaborating with Copilot to help you. So you are learning from it, it's learning from you to give you better suggestions and it's helping you to be a better programmer. And also accessibility. So you have access to like a lot of suggestions, you have access to a lot of code, you have access to basically a lot of things with Copilot because like I said, it was trained on a billion lines of code, it was trained on like multiple repositories on GitHub. So it's, uh, it has access to a lot of things that you don't have access to. So, I mean, it's going to give you better things. So that's like one of the benefits of using Copilot. So I hope after this session, you should be able to use or you should enjoy using Copilot. So um, the next thing we want to do is, uh, I think it's the demo. Okay, so what are the limitations and challenges? 
Copilot is good, yes. Copilot has a lot of benefits. You make me 10 times dev. I can build an e-commerce site in 30 minutes. So um, what are the challenges? So now, while Copilot has like significant benefits, yeah, it also has like some limitations and challenges. Number one, like I mentioned, incorrect suggestions. So Copilot is not perfect. I mean, all AI tools out there, most all of them are not perfect. So it could give you an incorrect suggestion. So you 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 pick it and then you'll be like, oh Copilot gave me this wrong thing. That's like a limitation. Maybe it did not understand or you didn't write a correct or a more descriptive prompt for it. So it's like I don't know what to do here. Let me just give you something. Take. So lack of domain specific knowledge. So copilot knows everything. No, most things, maybe ninety nine percent, but I mean that one percent is a limitation. So it doesn't have knowledge on like a lot of things. So let's say you're writing um for example, I write Julia and when I'm writing, it's giving me, like, for instance, I want to do regex in it. And then it's giving me something that is very funny. And I'm like, this is not what I want. And then I have to go and look for it somewhere. So it doesn't have, like, knowledge on that particular thing. So that's, like, a limitation. Then security and sensitive information. Like I said, it scans, like, a lot of code on GitHub and a lot of code everywhere. So there might be sensitive information that someone to keep somewhere that does, don't want to share it and copilot to bring it to your front, opening someone's secrets to you. I don't mean like secret keys, do I mean like maybe sensitive information, maybe, I don't know, anything. Then over reliance on suggestions. So now this is when you're addicted to copilot and then your copilot is writing your code for you. And then the only thing you are doing is prompt engineering. You're writing, OK, generate this for me, generate that for me. And then when they call you on stand up, OK, can you explain to us how you did this thing? And you're saying MMM. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's one thing there. So I mean, you're yeah, over-reliant on it. And while it's good, it's making you more productive. But I mean, you're skipping a lot of fundamentals that you're meant to know. So as, as you are using it, also try to like learn. Then legal and license considerations. So I don't think Copilot knows which one is MIT or GNU or Apache or anything. It just bam everything to you. So that is one thing too, that Copilot. That's like one of the limitations or the um one of the, like the bad I won't say bad side, but not good side. So uh next up fighting. <laughs> So now, this is, we're getting to the demo session. So now, I want to get started with Copilot. Uh, at the end, we'll still have questions in case you have questions for me. So um, getting started with um, Copilot. So uh, OK, nice. It's, it's working very fast. So the, how do you get started with Copilot after all this English that I've said? So the first thing you have to do is, if you don't have a code editor, or uh, you don't have Visual Studio Code, you actually have to like go to code.visualstudiocode.com to get Visual Studio Code. Then you install Copilot. You go to like your extension marketplace, you install it. Then you set up Copilot. If you don't have a GitHub account, you can quickly create one, it's free. You create it. Um, and then Copilot is in free. There's a free trial though that you can use. So you apply for the free trial, and you go there, and you check it. But do we have students here? So, OK, so yes, I'm a student too. And fortunately for us, Copilot is free. So Copilot is free for students. I mean, you need to have like your, um, you need to activate your student pack. So now, a lot of people don't know about the student pack. I used to suffer before about like, I, I have, there are a lot of things I use with my student pack. A lot of things like I'll go expert, um, educative, and the like. So, it has like a lot of things there. So you can scan the QR code. Um, I forgot to do it for the last one. So you can just scan it. It will take you there. Then you like, you show your students. If you don't have, or you've not activated your students, um, GitHub education, you have to activate it. And you have to use it. And then you just connect it to your GitHub account. And you are good to go. That's how I use it for free, though. So um, is anyone still doing this? 
Okay, so uh, now we'll take some time. Okay, so demo. So now this is like, I'll be showing it here, right? So now, before we move on, or before, okay, so before we begin the demo and we start doing wonders with copilot, right? There's, there's something that we need to know that copilot uses something called prompts. I know everyone or most people should know what prompts are because like for you to use GPT or BAD, you need to know prompts. So a prompt refers to the input that you provide. So prompts is like basic stuff. If someone is at the door and I say open the door, that's a prompt. I'm telling the person to open the door and then the person will open the door for me, right? So that's a prompt. So now, some tips, some tips to take note of when you are using Copilot. Be clear and specific. You can't tell Copilot um, something that he doesn't understand. Maybe I want to do, um, I want to do, let me see. Uh, I want to return two numbers, or I want to write Fibonacci sequence. So I, I just want to do something, and then I'm writing the story for Copilot, like, oh, today I went to the market, and then I saw somebody, and then the person was talking about Taylor sequence, and then I came home, and then I want to write it in Python, and like, Copilot is, like, what's my business? Go straight to the point. So, like, you have to be clear and specific, right? So, use natural language, too, like, Copilot at the moment he only understands English. Last time I checked, so you can't be telling it French or Spanish or something. Copilot just Copilot just look at you. So leverage best practices like um, using verbs. So you want to tell Copilot to do something for you. So you tell it, oh, generate, decode, encode, um, multiply. You no know, things like that that will make it verb. So um, there are, there are, um, I think they are like different um, courses on prompt engineering that you can use. You can learn prompt engineering if you want Copilot to like give you what you actually want. So that's like one thing. And then lastly, iterate and refine. So Copilot, like I've been stressing, it might not give you um, correct suggestions. So you could accept it, make your changes, and ask for more um, changes or anything. So I think after this is where the demo comes up. Is anyone still trying to set up um, Copilot as a student? Okay, so let me, let, me, let me just quickly check. Okay, I think that's all. Okay, so. Um, so yeah. Okay, so yes, um, let me increase this. I think it's very small. So uh, is it big enough? Uh, shit. Okay, so uh, this is um, the this is the landing page for Copilot. So you could just check it, explore the docs, and yeah. So for individuals that don't have um, access or they are not students, you can have like a free trial and if you, if you want your business to use, so you can go there to do it. So you could see this is literally how it works. No, it just opens like, I think someone was writing, but this is basically just an example and you can see there's Go, there's Ruby, there's JavaScript and there's Java. So um, yeah. Uh, I would need you to go to this repository where we would be doing it. So let me just quickly roll up here. I think that was one part. So, uh, no. Okay. So um, we'll be using this repository. So you can scan this QR code. I'm trying my best to make it accessible for everyone. So yeah, people, if you can't see it, just scan this QR code. It's going to take you to this particular repository. I came up with this repository that we could use for um, the GitHub demo. So yeah, just scan it. And please, how many people are following actually? So I know my people. So yeah, thank you. So scan it. You should see a repository like this. So this is it. And yeah, so literally, you could read the rep everything here. 
Acudu note was generated with copilots. Uh, yes, yeah, it was generated with copilots. So I just like I just gave the prompt that oh this 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 and it just came up with everything for me. Saved me like one hour work because I don't know English. Okay, so who is still going to this repository? Uh, okay, it's showing here. So just like load it up and. Sorry? So are we all on the same page? Okay, so um, I would come here and so. Um, okay, so this one too is pretty small too. Okay, so I'm coming. Okay. I think it's one more. Uh, one more. So I think it's big enough, right? So uh yeah. So if you check the repository, I have um an index.html. It's I think it's empty. Yeah, so let's see. Okay. So I have an index.html that is empty. Yeah, and so we'll be doing we'll just be doing like basic stuff with it since we're getting started. Nothing too serious, nothing too hard and this. So yeah, as a student too, you also have access to tab nine. I use the two a lot because I don't know how to code. So uh so now we have this Fibonacci series here. Let me close this here. So we have this Fibonacci series here that was that was written and I hope everyone knows what Fibonacci series are. <laughs> so even if you don't know about it, I mean, we could, so for starters, we could come here and, how many people are Python devs? We have JavaScript and we have Python. I know those are like the most popular languages that a lot of devs use here. So how many people do Python? How many people do um, JavaScript? Uh, well, many that do JavaScript though. Sorry, you people are many. <laughs> so, <laughs> So if you come here, um, there's Copilot. Yeah, you could also download Copilot Lab. So Copilot Lab helps you to um, explore, or it, it's also like Copilot. So I think it's still in its early phase. You can use this to um, explore, to translate it into another language. Basically, it's like a lab for Copilot. So you could also use it. So um, yeah, let's go back to this. And I come here and I just put doc string like one, two, three. So now Copilot would know that okay, I'm trying to like I want to do something, right? And also, um, sorry, I forgot to mention. So if you already have Copilot um, on your VS Code, you should be seeing something like this. Yes. Yeah, so this is Copilot here. And when you click on it, it should um, it should something should come up. I don't know why. It's not coming up. It should tell you something about discipline, um, copilot or not. So um, now I'm here, and let me see. So whenever you write, copilot is meant. This thing is meant to like have this um, circle. It's meant to be turning. It's basically thinking. That's it showing is thinking. So um, I don't know. So let me just say this function. This function. My copilot is not working. Hey, they're mutants. Yeah, I'm connected to the. So you also have to be connected. I'm connected to a network. Um, let me see. Let me try closing my VS Code. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, Okay, so um, now I'm back here. So you can see that it's turning, right? So now it generates a, a doc string for me that says returns a list of um, the first n Fibonacci numbers. So to accept uh, the uh, to accept the suggestion, you could actually just over around it, and then you see accept accept word and it generates like two things for me. So uh, I can click on it and I can see like two suggestions, right? So I have this and I, w I prefer this. So now I just click on accept and the shortcut is as, um, tab. So I just go tab and then I click on it. So now let's say now I'm writing it and I don't, I, maybe there are people that 
don't know what Fibonacci is. So I could just start writing like a Fibonacci number is, so it's like generates in phases for me. So is, um, I don't know, let me just say, is a number or something. So that is, so I mean, I just click on tab and if a Fibonacci number is a number that is the sum of this. So you can see that it's helping me write my doc string. And it's for people that don't know, people like me that don't know what Fibonacci number is. So it actually helps me to generate, let me make it kind of bigger. So, okay, so. So you can see that it actually helps me to like generate my doc string. I didn't, I did not have to do a lot of things. I did not have to do a lot of thinking. You already knew what I was in, right? You knew the context and the context was, I was in a Fibonacci function and then it returns like a doc string. I start with the doc string. I could actually just come under it. Like, I don't need to write the doc string. I just put a space on it and then, um, Copilot, you know, I want to write a doc string because in Python, doc strings are under like the function name. So that's like one thing to. Um, <coughs> so now let's say now I want to, I, let's, I want to use like recursion. So um, I'll say um, maybe use recursion or something. So use rec using recursion, using, in fact, it's actually generating. You can see that I, I don't know if it's hearing me, but. <laughs> I want to use recursion, so um, I just say using recursion, and it start thinking, and then first thing I put, and so you could see that it knows that I wrote, um, it knows that I wrote a doc string previously, right? So because I wrote a doc string, it's providing doc string for me in this next um, suggestion, and. I'm using recursion here, so I just come here. I could click on tab, but I want people to see what I'm doing, so I'll click on accept. So now I accept it, and like I can use it. I can use it. So I just come up here and I copy this. So uh, let's see. So now let's test it if it actually works. And I mean, it literally knows what I want to do. So I just copy this and um, I just put this here. And yeah, so now opening my terminal. Uh, sorry. Okay, so uh, the terminal is so big. So I'm down here and I do, well, I just run this here, yeah, this play button. So now it's asking me enter the um, number of Fibonacci numbers. I want to generate and I put four and then it generates the Fibonacci number for me and that is zero one one two. So it keeps on asking me until let's say maybe I want to say break it after first asking. I could just ask it. So that's it in Python. It's also the same thing in JS. So if you go to the JS, you see it's like a palindrome check that checks for um it checks for like palindrome. So I come here and I don't know. I want to like, let's come here first and try something. I haven't tried this before. So I just say, um, this, this. Um, so let me say, optimize, optimize, um, is it optimize? Optimize solution for, or optimized function rather, function. And then I come down here and it starts. I come down here again and this and this. So I'm basically pressing enter and I'm pressing tab, right? And I'm just going, please, are we following? Okay, thank you. So I come here and I come here and I think that should be all. I don't know, it's still in the spirits. So <laughs> I'm done. So yeah, so. That should be, oh, Jesus. So that's all, right? So now I've returned this. So let's say I'm doing DSA2 and I want it to give me in an O of N solution. So I put it there in my prompt. So I can come up here and I can, you know, I can just copy this um, and put it. So I'm up here and in, um, let me see. O of, sorry, OC. So 
Now, I come here and it, it gives me. So now you have to check it one by one. I don't write JS like that. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what, if it's what, what I was giving me is right. So I just get it done. And okay, so I have this and it should be done by now. I don't know why it's giving me line by line, though. And that should be all. So now with this, I have been able to generate um, an O of N time complexity and O of one space complexity for my code. And if you scroll up, I think it's like almost the same. It's literally the same thing. So it gave me an optimized solution for what I was going to do. So now let's see if we could write um, a doc string too. So I come up here and I put, um, what's, okay, so, and no, I don't want this. So I want to say I'm function. I think this is where they write. Okay, so function to check if um, a string is a palindrome, right? And I have it here. So copilot, like, it's my pair programmer. So can you see how it's like a pair programmer for you? I have not left my screen to look if this code works. I mean, if the Python one works, the JS2 should work. So now I have one more thing too. So now let's go to the HTML.CSS. Now the HTML.CSS, um, did I just say HTML.CSS? The index.html file is empty and we have, um, we have want to do maybe a simple landing page, right? That doesn't have anything inside. So you could start an empty, you could start empty string, an empty file with copilot. So you could just come here and you put um, the, you put your comment. So I start, uh, sorry, I'm coming. So just say this. Um, so generates, generates um, a landing page with a button. So let me say, I want with a button. It's a button, button and, I want to add little CSS to it, so I could say an internal CSS. So I'm being more specific, because I know that, you know that you can write external and internal CSS, right? So I want my CSS, because it's going to be pretty small, nothing too serious. I want my CSS, and I want my HTML to be inside one file. So I come here, and I do CSS, sorry, CSS, and yeah. So now it's going to start. Um, Copilot has started generating my code for me, and then I accept. Then I come here and continue accepting. I'm pressing tab, so um, I, I don't want to start um, clicking on like accept, accept. So all the actions that I are seeing here, I'm just clicking tab. I come down. I know it's not done. Add. So I come down again. So body. Um, anything else? That should be all. So now we're done with this. And so let me see. I could just um, let me drag it to my uh, this here. And so now, Copilot, I have um, coming. So now I have a, I told it it should generate a landing page with a login button for me, right? And what did it do? You actually obeyed my orders or my commands or prompts, and it gave me a login with it. So obviously, it's not going to work because I did not connect anything to it. So I click on this, I'll have this. So now, as a dev, this is where I come in and I start writing my code. So I could go back to, um, I could go back here and um, let's see. Uh, come in one minute. So I could just come here and I could say, Maybe H1, I want an H1 tag. And let me say, welcome to my landing page. Welcome to my, let's go pilot. <laughs> to my landing page. So now I come here and I control R it. Oh, it, can't, it doesn't work, oh my god. Oh, I'm not in front end, Dave. <laughs> uh, okay, let me see. Uh, okay, I should put it inside the div. Ah, uh, no wonder. So, Copilot, no, you knew I was an Olodo, and then he said, I'm not going to help you complete the nonsense you're writing, right? And then he left me alone, and then I was doing my own. 
So now I have this welcome to my landing page. I think it's because it's too big. So if I have this, so this is how it looks like. And I can do my wonders I want to do with it. So I mean, Copilot has given me like a starter code for what I'm doing, right? Uh, so I don't have to start thinking of, oh, I want to design the bot. So I could come here. I could change the um, color. I could do anything I want to do. But um, it was an empty. Was an empty um, file before, right? Like we all saw, it was empty, and I used Copilot to do that. So there are other things too that I can do with Copilot. So let's say I um, let's, so let's come back to Python, and I will just come here and say um, convert. Let's see if it works. Convert above code code um, to JavaScript. JavaScript, and come here. Or let's do PHP. I'm talking about too much. Oh, let's do PHP. Oh, sorry, I'm doing right. PHP. Oh my God. So now I, so you can see that it knows that I am not in a PHP environment, right? So now it's giving me comments as it should, and I write this. So, <coughs> so I think that's it. So you can see that it's act, it knows that I am not in um, a PHP environment, like I said. And it will put the code I'm looking for, or the gen one I'm generating, it's going to put it in comments for me in that language. So now, when I now want to take it to another language, then I would now be able to uncomment it there, and I mean use it. So it can work for me. I can convert to various languages. I can do anything. So, um, so. Uh, I think this is all for it. Yeah. It still goes on. Wow. Interesting. <sighs> wow. So many, so many coily braces. So now, okay, so this part is just asking me for, like, questions. So now, let's say, um, what else can we do? So let me create a um, readme file and call it today.md today.md. So, so now I want to start writing this. And I come here and I say today. Right? So now I just, I can start something. I can say today is, uh, today is a good day. I mean, today is a good day, right? We're learning about copilot, so it's a good day. So, and then I continue. I'm going to do, I'm not doing any work. <laughs> I'm going to do some work. I mean, it's just like random text, right? But in, let's say I have um, a project that I'm working on, I can use Copilot to actually come up with this. So uh, let me open up the README here. Um, so this Copilot, this um, README here. So what I did was I just put GitHub Copilot session at ChaosCon Africa. I wish I recorded it. And then it gave me everything down here. The only thing I changed in this was this. That was this was the only thing that I wrote in this README. Everything here was generated, same as the license. So I told it it's an MIT license, and it gave me an MIT license. The only thing I changed here was writing my name, because Copilot doesn't know my name. <laughs> so that's like the only thing I changed in the two. So this um, this um, particular repository was used, or Copilot was used for everything here, because I was trying to, or I was trying to demonstrate Copilot. So I think that's like all. Does anyone have anything else they want to see with Copilot that I could try? Any suggestion? No suggestions. Okay. All right, so um, I think that's basically all. Th there are a lot of things you could do. So it's because I'm working on like a very simple repository here. So let me see if I can get like some code that I'm working on. Um, so I'm working on this particular project. Don't worry, it's open source, so I can like show it. So like now I'm working with this, and I come here and let me see. Um, no, no, it's not constant. So uh, I think it's okay. So uh, yeah. 
So in like, if I want to write test for this code now, I could. So uh, let me see. If I remove this code and I actually want to write it, Copilot will suggest the same thing for me. So let's see. I let me add one more. Um, let me add one more. So you could see that it's actually it knows I'm writing typed Python. So it's giving me my Python in um, a typed version. And I come down here and I do um, def um, def msg. Let me do msg or something. So and I do this. So I mean, it knows that I'm writing or I want to write for. Sorry, I did not do this. Don't let me embarrass myself. Okay. So now this, it knew that I was going to write a method for like the MSG variable, and it gave me it. So Copilot understands what you are doing. Copilot understands what you are writing and everything, and then it will give you like a suggestion. So throughout this. Um, demo. I didn't have to go to, um, I didn't have to go to Stack Overflow or Google or anything that I use for searching to actually, actually check for um, how to convert my Python code to PHP, especially. So, I mean that's like the beauty of Copilot. So I think we've come to the end of this session. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Thank you, Fian, for that amazing session. Um, 